Welcome to Isolation Comedy by Comedy Wham. We have been doing this for so fucking long. Wait, what? How long has this been? I uh, People are just giving up on the quarantine now. They're like, we've been it long enough. And that's like, this show is just my only measure of time. What is this show? Good point. I'll introduce it first. <laughs> this is Isolation Comedy. Um, we do this every, well, we used to do it every Tuesday and every Friday. Now we only do it every Friday because Texas has decided it's over and we should try uh, whatever. Anyways, um, <laughs> welcome to the show. It's completely free. You guys didn't pay anything to do this. Congratulations. Um, it's not a stand-up show. I tell you guys this every every show. If this was a stand-up show, we'd be saying things like, don't yell in here at the comics and don't do two min two drinks no more. Um, but drink as much as you want. I certainly am. I have my refrigerator right here and uh, it's Friday and I have nowhere to be. So that's what I'll be up to. Um, if you guys are enjoying yourself and you're at the show and you're at your house and you're enjoying yourself, subscribe or uh, hop in the chat over there. It's fun, introduce yourself. Tell us what you did today. Tell us what you're getting up to. Um, I, th I think you're at a comedy show, so you can start <laughs> off right there. Don't wanna you know, direct the, the meeting at all, but uh, welcome, welcome so much. Um, life has been changing for me. I used to treat myself when I sat down and peed. I'd be like, ooh, a little treat for me. Um, now I've had to treat myself so much. Uh, that I don't remember ever standing to pee anymore, but that's just uh, I like I overtreated myself. I I now am a sitter. I'm a, a sitter, and I don't mind who knows it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. There's a lot of shame surrounding that statement. I think my dad would be sad. I told everybody that, but uh, <laughs> I've I've learned to just you know do whatever. I've been drawing the Bible uh, because I had a lot of free time. Uh, I casted Greg Abbott as the paralyzed man who gets <laughs> hogtied by his friends and then lowered into the roof. Uh, that bad? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, also, if you guys are hearing laughter uh, in other people's set, of course, uh, that <laughs> is because the comedians are online. We're trying to make this uh, immersive. And you know what? If you're a really good fan, maybe... Maybe you should come into this room with us. I don't know if that's allowed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you'll do or what kind of freak you are. Uh, but you know, some of us aren't wearing pants, and that's a joke yeah. from quarantine week one. Remember that shit? Okay, <laughs> it is time to get the show started. Uh, if this is not the start. The start is when I bring up what I feel. What I personally feel is your first comedian. Your first comedian tonight has a quarantine special on YouTube. Put your hands together in your own house and drink all of the beer that's in your hand for Ty Nguyen. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tai Nguyen, and um, due to the quarantine, I pretty much lost track of the date. I have no idea what day is it or when stuff is reopening. But about two weeks ago, some comedian friend of mine from Kaneen, they hit me up on Instagram and they say, hey, we have an open mic on Thursday and Sunday. Do you want to go to either one of them? And I was like, dude, don't Kaneem care about CDC regulation? And then I like, nope, over here, people want to die. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's so horrible, horrible about Kaneem that people want to die? What's going on over there? Um, other than that, I think I heard that comedy club are opening back up. Like they're now up to like 50 people in the audience. I think that if you perform during this time, 
you better do your best material because people are risking their life to hear your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be the last show they watch and you leave a bad impression on them. <laughs> um, I think the coronavirus have many benefits. Like we're doing Zoom show right now. That's advancement in technology. And people don't seem to give credit that ever since the coronavirus hit, sexual harassment has gone down by like zero. I don't know much about when like, you know, things are going to be back to normal. But I know once the Me Too hashtag is came back. That's when I know that, yep, the coronavirus is gone. Because <laughs> you can't sexual harass somebody during this time. That would be very insensitive. <laughs> I don't know if that's funny or cringy. <laughs> that might be cringy in real life. Um, so I drive for Niff. Yep. People now consider that a hero. So yesterday I pick up like this 18 year old girl, her mom ordered a ride from her for me to pick her up at a gas station. And she was wearing like a dress and then she was all crying. When she got in the car, I asked her, why are you crying? And she said she hung out with some people that she thought were her friend. They told her to go inside the gas station then they just drove off. They stole her purse. Oh. And, they, and then I thought, damn, this is a moment in a girl life where she's going to have trust issue for the rest of her life. So I was trying to make her feel better. I told her, hey, Shelly, I'm sorry this happened to you. Could I play you a song to maybe make you feel better? Have you heard of the band called Naughty by Nature? They have a song called OPP that go, are you down with OPP? Do you know what OPP is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this quarantine made me realize that contrary to popular belief, I don't need stand-up comedy to keep on living. <laughs> Yeah, there's other stuff that could replace it. Like a five minute conversation with a stranger at a park where I talk for the whole five minutes and then laugh our politeness because talking about eating ass in public is too awkward to process with a straight face. <laughs> I just met this person. Why is he telling me about his Friday night activity? I'm walking with my family for Christ's sake. Grandma seemed excited. You eat ass, Grandma? <laughs> I wrote that joke today when I was walking at the park just for this show. That's a one nine I wrote, and I tried to remember it, but I'm reading it off of the screen. You never know. Y'all tell that I read it off of the screen? No. Can't, right? I've been watching a lot of, y'all seen those YouTube videos of Kung Fu Master getting the ass whooped by MMA fighter? <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. Like, why is there so many fake Kung Fu Master that post video of themselves just like waving their hand and all their students just fly backwards? <laughs> and then there's people that know MMA, they go out and then they whoop their ass in real life. I mean, I guess that's a great way to channel your energy because you could have been like a cult leader, but instead you use it to be a fake Kung Fu master. <laughs> and they're saying that, hey, that's bad for the student because that's not getting their money worth. Even if you learn fake Kung Fu, you still have to stretch. <laughs> that's like a yoga class right there. <laughs> So you can't really complain. You're still being shaped doing fake kung fu moves. Huh? 
Um, you know how about Elon Musk? Elon Musk, he have a kid, and he gave his kid the name X A E A twelve. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, that's the end of my set. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> everyone i'm sure you're wondering what's the ending to that joke and how long was it that he <laughs> couldn't wrap it up in his time i mean how long was that joke well i'll tell you what he told me the story the joke. <laughs> and i'll tell you the punchline of that joke uh co- um shit the setup <laughs> <was>. <laughs> um elon musk has a kid named e54321 and, uh, and that's uh, after an uh, American Eagle coupon. <laughs> Damn, we got them, Ty. They tried to get away from us, but I brought them right back. Woo-woo-woo. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, we're going to keep this show rolling. Uh, we have another amazing comedian. This next comedian has her album on iTunes, and it's called Trash Baby, and there is merch. Give it up for Jasmine Ellis and your own. Hey, everybody. Um, hi. So this is uh, my millionth Zoom one of these shows. Um, I was originally someone who thought I would never do this. Uh, and then I waited two weeks and I was like, and then I lost my day job and I was like, oh shit, I have to do this now. Um, quarantine has been interesting. It's weird being in Texas though, because Texas seems to believe it's over. So you just feel like nothing really makes sense. And, and I don't know, it feels like you're grounding yourself, which feels dumb. It feels like I might as well go do something stupid, but then I don't want to. That's not really a joke. I'm just kind of wandering into some ideas. I've been letting myself just think a lot about stuff that makes me angry, which probably isn't healthy. Honestly, being like today, I was really angry because uh, Joe Biden said something really fucking stupid. But it was like, it was so wonderfully stupid. Basically what he said, for those of you who don't know, is that if you vote for Trump, you're not black. And I was like, wow, how do you say something so racist make me have to defend people who vote for Trump. <laughs> what a position to put me in. Like, I hate it. I hate it so much. And I come, my family is a uh, very, very staunch Democrats and they're very, uh, they're like, you know, Joe or nobody, Joe or nobody. But I'm like, we can't, he's getting to the point where he's just like that drunk uncle that all of us wish would go home and he won't stop. And I don't know if that's so much better than like that other drunk uncle that <laughs> want to come home. <laughs> I really thought I had a leg to stand on. Now I'm just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, but that's all of all of what I wanted to say about politics. I was thinking about weird toys that I had as a kid. And I was born in 1989, so I grew up in the 90s. And I just thought about this. All of the dolls when I was a kid had the name baby in the title. Like their name, none of them had names. They didn't, they weren't named like Patricia or Jessica. They just were like baby tumbles or baby rollerblades. Like it was like baby and then an action. And I think that's given me a really unhealthy expectation of children. Like, I'm <laughs> like, like I feel like if I have a kid, you need to come with a job, do something. When I was a baby, you finger painted. Like I expected something. I was thinking back to this one doll in particular my sister had called Baby Tumbles Surprise. And this is, if you guys Google this, it's the weirdest looking toy. It was this doll that had like a head that was plastic and it was hard plastic. It weighed like three pounds. And then the body was a beanbag. 
So the whole point of this doll was to drop it on its head because the way it worked is it would do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> like literally it was a toy that you were like, hey, want to learn how to be a mommy? Drop your kid. And like, I just, <laughs> you wonder why millennials are scared. You wonder why millennials are not having kids anymore. That's fucking why. Uh, I feel like an elder millennial though. I'm 31, I'm married. And I feel like as soon as I tell people I'm married, they like, they, I don't know, maybe it's just living in Austin. Anytime you live somewhere cool, it's uncool to be married. Like nobody ever wants to hear about my sex life. Not that I want to just be like, hey, we're fucking, and <laughs> I'm like, you know, but like, but I am married and it's weird because I feel like my single friends just aren't interested in that, but they'll ask. And then I tell them and they just tune it out. I feel like there's nowhere to talk about married sex. Like I was thinking about it and I can't even find married porn. I try. And I, just feel like I don't believe those people are married. I don't buy it. There's never, you know what I mean? There's never a long conversation about joint accounts. Like I need, I need to see that build up. For me, my ideal porn right now would just be like a Cialis commercial that goes too far. Like that's what I want. <laughs> I just want to see two gray haired people on top of a mountain just getting it, you know? Uh, thinking about <laughs> you don't want to see gray-haired people getting it I, do. Uh, I was thinking about how much I love American music and when I say American music I mean a specific type of American music I mean the shit that gets white people hype at weddings I love that stuff I, don't stop <laughs> believing living on a prayer you know I have the tiger that kind of just that 80s we can do it music. And I was thinking, I was like, America is the best at these inspirational anthems because we have the worst healthcare. That's why. <laughs> Think about it. If you were fighting for your life in an Uber, you would turn on living on a prayer. It would feel like the right time. <laughs> that song on. Canadians don't have to have those kinds of songs because like nothing bad happens to them. They can go to the doctor. You know, you'd be like, oh, isn't this ironic? It's slightly uncomfortable. Like that works in Canada where you can actually see a doctor. But here we need power chords. I'm just glad. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of music, one of my favorite singers in the world passed away this weekend, Betty Wright. Do you guys hear about her? You heard mm -hmm. of her? It's okay if you haven't. It's okay. Um, I love Betty Wright. I have to clarify that I'm not saying Betty White because people uh -huh. get confused. Um, and what's so great about her is she knew how to write a heartbreak song. She's really well known for the Clean Up Woman, which is that song that's like, clean up woman is a woman who, and basically the whole metaphor of the song is that another woman came and she swept up her man. Get it? Clean up, clean her up. <laughs> what I love is if you look on Betty Wright's greatest hits, the same year that the Clean Up Woman came out, there was another song called The Secretary about a woman takes your man because she works with him, right? And I looked at it, I was like, 1974 was a rough year, Betty. Like it had to be the same too. Then I kept going through her best of the same year after the cleanup woman, after the secretary, she had another song called The Babysitter. And I was like, damn, these women are barely employed. Like it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> First, how do you even have time to cheat with the babysitter? Why are you and the babysitter home at the same time? This shit pissed me off. So, thank you. Those are my newest jokes. Thank you. Jasmine Ellis, yeah, give it up for her in your own house. Um, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Give her more money. She deserves it, and you have it. You know you have it. You know you have it. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to Isolation Comedy, if you're just tuning in. This is, uh, it's not a stand-up show, but we do tell jokes. Uh, uh, thank you for having us in your house. Your house looks messy. Uh, clean it the fuck up. It's gross. It's gross. Get the get your shit together. Uh, is what my boyfriend yelled at me last night. So I'm sleeping at my mom's house. Uh, how's your quarantine doing? You guys are doing good. Everyone's doing good in here. Great. Uh, how about we bring on our next comedian, who guest star on with RuPaul on Netflix's AJ 
and the Queen. If you haven't seen it, you're going to want to see it. And guess what? You do have time because the quarantine's not over. This is a pencil. Hey, now I'm Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> uh, Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, because this boy's in L.A., you know he is. He goes live on Instagram. Give it up for Teddy Margus. Yeah. Hello, everybody. It's me, Teddy Vargas. Yay! I am getting drunk <laughs> in this quarantine, <laughs> and not because why you think. Hold on. I'm going to wet my whistle. <laughs> I'm dealing with parents during the quarantine. Anybody out there dealing with parents during the quarantine? Oh my God, <laughs> pain. help me. I have to drink every time I'm at the end of the day because my parents are like, okay, my parents were never gadget savvy ever. Like they didn't have, my mother got a cell phone two years ago, but from 7-Eleven. <laughs> She had a 7-Eleven little tiny, I used to call it the Motorola TRD, the turd, because it was the shittiest phone in the universe. It had like two ringtones, and if you had a text, you had to hit select every single time, like A select, E select, else. And I was like, why do you have that phone? But that was what she wanted, and she was fine with it. So that was cool until the quarantine when now she needs more updated things. This is how not gadget savvy my parents are. They, I swear to you, just last Christmas got a microwave. <laughs> and they think it is the most amazing thing in the world. How do you have a microwave? I was like, are you serious? You're not gonna believe. And then when I went home this Christmas, she showed me the microwave. It was a toaster oven. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even a microwave. It was a toaster oven. And they're standing in front of it, giving it a round of applause about how fast it works. I was like, what is happening with you people? Okay. A two. We had to get her a smartphone because, hello, she's quarantined. We're not going to see her. She's elderly. And so we're so afraid she's going to catch it. So she and my father, my mother and father are quarantined. We don't even go to see them. So the only contact we have is via the smartphone. So I taught her how to text on the smartphone. And she texts me in the beginning, emergency, emergency. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what? I'm not getting or being able to receive checks. <laughs> I said, Mom, but I, I, got, I, I got your text. Are you getting my text? Yes, but I'm not getting your sisters. <laughs> oh, there she is, that bitch. I know what she's doing, my sister. She's avoiding this whole entire thing. So I was busy and I was like, well, look, it's working. I'll text her bleep blah blue. And at the end of our conversation, I did the worst thing in the universe. I texted a smiley face emoji. <laughs> you would have thought I found the cure for cancer because she said to me, oh my God, you're not gonna believe what just happened on my phone. What happened? I got a smiley face. I was like, oh, I know, it's an emoji. I, I sent it. How did you do it? Tell me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time right now to tell you how to do it. It's, 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 it's complicated, but ask your granddaughter. Two hours later, I get a text. Look what I can do. I got two strawberries, a banana, a peach <laughs> plum. And she goes, isn't this great? I was like, yes, if you're making a fruit salad, what? <laughs> now she only texts in emojis. It's like, I have to read hieroglyphics. <laughs> How are you, mom? Birthday cake. <laughs> Wait a minute. What does that mean, birthday cake? Okay, birthday cake is good. So she must be good. Oh God, I can't do it. I can't do it. Then we were having a party for my niece. And so try to get this woman on Zoom. I said, look, I'm gonna talk you through how to do Zoom. She goes, I'm not doing Zoom. Well, mom, you don't even know what Zoom is. Yes, I do. 
It's that thing on the internet that everyone can spy and they are looking at you and I'm not going to have my face on a porn. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who said anything about porn? We're going to have a cute party for your granddaughter. Nope, I know it. I've heard the story before. Your Aunt Liz, she did a Zoom and two weeks later, they found her face on somebody on a porn. I'm like, where are you getting this information. I can, I have to have a drink at the end. But the kicker of all kicker stories is this one. She doesn't want to do email. Now with all this time, she wants to send actual letters. <laughs> and she said, you know what I could do on my computer? I can make stationery. I said, well, beautiful, yay, round of applause for you, do it. I'm having a problem though. I said, what's your problem? God, I can't deal with this, I need a drink. What's your problem? She said, I wanna put a picture above my name and I don't know how to do it. I said, okay, that's very easy. Find an image that you like, right click it. You can bring it over and paste it above your name. She goes, where do I find the images? I was like, mm -hmm. At anywhere, you could go anywhere. Do you go into the publisher? There's like a clip art. Find a clip art, right click the image that you like, put it above your name. I don't have clip art. I was like, Mom, you have clip art. We bought you the computer. Listen to me. We're gonna go step by step. It's not, it's not an apple that's too too advanced for her. She's got a PC. So I was like, hit your start, go into your publisher, move it over, click clack clue, a bippity boppity boo. Do it. So she's like, I don't have it. I was like, well, then just go to Google. Google clip art. I don't care. Go to clipart.com. Go to clipart.com. Find an image that you like. Right click it. Bring it over. <laughs> then, I had then I drank myself to sleep. <laughs> I got a letter in the mail from mother. Now, granted, it was on beautiful purple paper. Her name is at the top in a <coughs> lavender font. I think it was... Maybe Garamond or Helvetica, I'm not sure. And above her name was a giant <laughs> vagina. <laughs> like a giant vagina was above <laughs> my mother's name. And I'm looking at the paper like, O-M-G, what is this? So I called my mom. I was like, hi, mom, guess what? I got your letter. Oh my God, I got your letter. And she goes, isn't it gorgeous, Teddy? I did the whole thing by myself. I said, mom, mom, you have a giant vagina. I could have left it at that. Mom, you have a giant vagina. <laughs> mom, you have a giant vagina above your name. And she said, what? I said, mom, look at, but what is that picture above your name? What are you talking about? That's not a vagina, it's a lily. <laughs> I said, mom, it has hair on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you heard like dead silence, like dead silence and papers rustling. And she was like, oh my God. Oh my God, Teddy, I have a vagina above my name. <laughs> I sent this letter to your grandmother. I sent it to our priest. Well, I went to that clitart.com you told me to go to. <laughs> Wait, what? You went where? I went to clitart.com. <laughs> I said, mom, I told you to go to clipart.com. <laughs> Not clitart, clipart.com. And she goes, well, what the hell's the difference? <laughs> and I felt sad for my mom. <laughs> mom doesn't know the difference between a clit and a clip. Okay. So I told her. She was like, Oh. Uh, well, no wonder I'm getting all this lesbian shit on my computer right now. Uh, I can't. I'm going to finish my drink. That was my set. I'm Teddy Margus. 
I love you guys. I can't wait to watch the rest of the show until I black out. <laughs> <laughs>
Damn, bro, wait. Now, I'll take the picks up, but I don't want no size 10. I'm a 10 and a half, man. You need to throw my picks up. You know. Yeah, yeah. Essential workers, man. They opening this shit back up, though. They opening it up. They, get, they opening it up in Texas. You know, uh, goddamn Trump. They uh, they gonna open this motherfucker. Trump bullshit, man. Trump a scary motherfucker. All right, look, look. I tell people all the time, man, get your shit right. Trump ain't bullshitting out here. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? This motherfucker here. Hey, look, look at him, bro. This ain't nothing. He looked like a, a villain. I feel like I'm in a real life uh, super a superhero movie, bro. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a real life comic book or some shit like that. Like he the only motherfucker who ain't got sick. He the only nigga with the antidote. How he ain't got sick? <laughs> Everybody next to him coughing and shit. Everybody coughing. This motherfucker the only motherfucker walking around healthy as hell, smiling, still bullshit. Like, bro, he a real life villain. That's a real life villain if you ever seen him. <laughs> That's every villain in every movie. Just look at him. He built like the penguin already, so he have way <laughs> <laughs> he built like the fiend when he got that little bullshit on his hair, all of them, all that little shit that just poked over. All villains got that little bullshit right there that just sit over the shit. That take over the world shit right there. You just swap it over and shit when you come up with new ideas. Trump ain't bullshit. We need some goddamn gun control out here. You know, that's the real that's the real issue right there, man. Real gun control. I ain't talking about this bullshit when you take everybody guns. Hell no. Nah. I'm from Texas. I want my gun. You ain't gonna be able to take everybody gun shit, but it's too many different type of guns. You know what I mean? If I was a president, everybody would get the same goddamn gun. That'd be the rule. You ain't gonna be walking around here with no AK. I got a 45. Hell no, nah, shit. It's too many different guns. I went to go shoot dice with my homeboys. Uh-huh. One of my homeboys, this motherfucker pulled out a Tommy gun. I'm like, nigga, where you get that from? <laughs> you gotta money around here, fam. Look, this one got a whole Tommy gun. We got too many different guns out here, bro. If I was a president, everybody get the same gun. Fuck all that. Everybody get a musket, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Think about it. You remember the old gun? The more you got to put the powder in. Ain't gonna be no more mass shootings with the musket. Think about that shit. If you look, if you the second motherfucker get a shot after the first person with a musket, your ass deserve to get shot. <laughs> Straight up. Because that means you sat there and watched his ass load that goddamn musket. Like, damn, he finna shoot the shit out of somebody. Pow! Oh, shit, he shot me. What would I do? You was the only one here. It was was real. (laughs) Gave you 30 minutes. Ain't gonna be no more bank robberies with a musket. You can't rob no bank with a goddamn musket. You need a a quick gun, quick in and out, draw it. Everybody lay this shit down. Goddamn musket too long. You gotta pull that bitch out for 30 minutes. Goddamn it, everybody lay this shit down. Little Melvin, secure the back right there. We gonna lay this bitch down. (laughs) Cops and came and shit. <laughs> hey, oh look, I just I just realized that was the light, man. Y'all need to change that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cause the crowd don't know. Look, so like when it's when your time is up, yo, it go whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so it feel like your joke wasn't shit. You were like, man, where that come from, bro? Where that I thought y'all said could nobody come in the chat room. <laughs> I got the new album coming out, man, June 10th. Make sure y'all check it out. It's going to be available on all the platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp. Uh, my cousin, he bootlegged a few copies, so if you go to the corner store, he'll have them up there for you if you need you one. I don't mind. Uh, June 10th, <laughs> man, I, I, I uh, 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 teamed up with Short Thing Records out of Austin. So, you know, I'm from Austin, so, you know, we can try to keep everything in-house. And uh, and that's how we doing it, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. That, that's the time, right? That was, yeah. Ah, yeah. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Enjoy the rest of the show. I got to run in here real quick, man, and, and check on my daughter to make sure my lasagna ain't burned up. I'm going to catch y'all later. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> sometimes Aaron will tell me stories uh, about where he grew up and I can't believe that he, it, that that took place in the United States of America. <laughs> 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 stories to me and he'll try to make me feel weird where he's like what you didn't grow up with snakes in your tap water no i didn't at all <laughs> what your 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 teacher uh wasn't also a um the local sheriff who did drugs with teens no <laughs> so fuck you <laughs> I'm out of outer space <laughs> I'm wearing, I wore a tie. I just, I thought it'd be nice to, uh, to dress up for this, for this. Uh, I am wearing, I'm wearing, I'm dressed up nice. I have no, no pants on at all. However, this is how I normally do stand up comedy, to be honest. With you. Uh, no pants, a complete and utter uh, silence crowd. A uh, lot of, uh, has anyone seen my phone? <laughs> I thought it'd be funny if I brought a mic with me, but it's not funny at all. So. Uh, I hope that your um, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the, the the background here. It's it's a little distracting. Give me two seconds. Here we go, friends. You guys are questions. Uh, I hope you guys have been having a fantastic uh, quarantine. I hope that you're uh, you're healing yourself mentally, physically, emotionally. This, the sad thing is, is that this background is my actual uh, background. The other one is really wasn't in outer space. This is a Justin Bieber poster uh, that my roommates. Uh, put up for me a few years ago that I've never taken down. Uh, next <laughs> are, uh, I have two bathrobes. This is about the, the, that bathrobe is a bathrobe that I use for uh, for showering purposes. It has never been washed. This one, uh, this is a towel actually, but this this one uh, I got this robe. This is kind of a traveling robe. I got this robe <laughs> a number of years ago. I was performing a. Uh, was performing stand-up comedy, remember? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> remember that thing you've devoted yourself to for the last eight years and ruined your life for, remember? <laughs> Look what happened to me now. I'm doing shows with Colton Dowling in my room. I am wearing shorts with this. I mean, this is not even... <laughs> my life is uh, continuing to fall apart. I, my, I, I join, um, I joined a, a, a cult. Uh, <laughs> not, not even, you know, everyone's always like, join a cult, you'll have sex with people, but there's so, we have to have sex with the, uh, the guy in charge. What the fuck is that about? <laughs> I'm trying to get my dick sucked, you know? I'm not trying, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying to service the great leader. Well, the great leader is an 88-year-old impotent man, and frankly, we have too many of those uh, right now. Myself included, unfortunately. Uh, when, I, when, when I don't regularly perform stand-up comedy, it's sort of, you know, like Samson uh, from the Bible? Moment of silence. <laughs> I, his name was Samson, and they would do this. Uh, I guess he got his strength from his hair. What, man, things were very different. Very, very different. Back then, you could, you could literally uh, meet the Son of God on the street. You could actually have him fix your, your garage if you're wealthy enough. And you could also uh, get your power from your hair. So Samson <laughs> was this guy who, I guess, if you cut his hair, his strength would go away. And I'm sort of like that, except uh, except with comedy. Except when I don't do comedy, I become uh, sexually impotent, which is very. <laughs> it's not that big a deal because I can't go anywhere because of the. Do you guys know about the quarantine? They have that in your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I make uh, like, like Texas references. I can't tell if they translate to a to a wider audience. But the point of of this whole whole story, my friends, is that sometimes we're going to go back to outer space for a moment because I'd like to show you all something. Sometimes something horrifying happens when you're on a uh, on the internet. So uh, so what happens is uh, sometimes when I like I move backward, 
or move my fo- you can actually see his face comes through a little bit so let's see if we can get <laughs> because it is horrifying is it gonna work it is what oh well Hey. Sometimes, if I'm like just gesticulating <laughs> wildly, people will, will will message me and they'll say, "Pat, why is there a man with a smoldering glance on his face in the background? <laughs> Who is he? Are you safe?" And the answer is Justin Bieber and no. None of us, <laughs> none of us have uh, will be safe. I, I'm, you know, I'm, lo- I'm looking through these. Uh, these comments, and I don't like them. <laughs> Let me say, I'm gonna. Okay, so yeah, this is not good. A lot of these comments. Hey, Pat. Uh, you know. Oh, nice joke, stupid. Or uh, hey, the Jews 9/11. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of anti <laughs> in these kind. Radu is a little too. Uh, can you know a little a little too uh, confusing looking to to laugh at that joke. The joke there is that Radu is laughing. <laughs> Uh, you guys can't hear it, but Radu uh, is a very, very suspicious looking person. Particularly if catch my drift, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm making it racial. And he laughed at the, anti, the anti-Semitism with a joy that I have not seen since uh, this morning. I, don't you dare give me the light. <laughs> they play a, uh, instead of a light because... See, it's interesting because when we first started doing these online shows, they would, they would, the host would give you the light, but you can't see it because they're in a different, uh, a different, you know, home or apartment. So uh, a lot of these, these, these shows went over by hours because comics had no idea when they were supposed to stop. So they just sort of, <laughs> <laughs> what, they, what they do instead is they, uh, they, they, they play a sad trombone sound effect. <laughs> so I, I heard that sound, that sad trombone. I choose to ignore it because someone, <laughs> these jokes. someone has to make the people laugh, make the people forget uh, all of the uh, the sadness that uh, that can exist in the world. Unfortunately, uh, that is the end of the set. So I, uh, you'll have to go back to your uh, your cold rooms, go back to your uh, apartments with no electricity. You'll, you'll have to go back to your your life your life of uh your your single twin bed that you have in uh in that shithole you call a bedroom and you have uh one mirror in the entire house directly above you, <laughs> you, can't, afford you, you can't afford electricity but you like to watch yourself as you as you calculate sexually so um i guess go back to that uh i guess keep on keeping on uh the truth is out there. I started watching X Files. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's it. And I just want to say to everyone out there in the world that sometimes God is trying to kill you. However, <laughs> there are ways to defeat God. I do not have enough time to get into it, but I guess, I guess read the Apocrypha Bibles. And uh, goodbye. Good luck. God bless you. Fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> Keep that shit going. <laughs> I'm gonna do that tonight. That's what I'm gonna do. So I don't know that you can stream Hamilton in this really good show, but you're not gonna want to do that. Not for two more comics, because we just have two more comics, and this next one you've seen them on this show a couple of times. You've also seen, uh, I hope you've seen, I hope you listen to these credits and then you go and do the credits that I tell you to do because this <laughs> next comic has a, a stand-up special and album, I Can't Die from Stand-Up Records and is on iTunes and the video special is on Vimeo. So like, I hope you go see it right now, but not right now, right now, write it in your notes. Give it up for Ryan Coney. <laughs> Yeah, Jack. no, I got uh, corporate blown smoke up my ass about the memos already. I can't have you, Jack. <laughs>
<laughs> no, five, 50 grand? No. Are you freaking kidding me? 50 grand. That ain't going to cut it, buddy. Yeah, 50 grand might get me a, a freaking asparagus at the Whole Foods. You know, suck my ass, Chet. Suck my ass, call me. Yeah. Yes. Pucker them lips, suck my little butthole. <laughs> All right, Chet. All right. Okay. No, I'll talk to you later. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 50 grand ain't going to do it. All right. So. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, business <laughs> as usual. You know how we do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I know there's y'all have been, if you've been keeping tabs with me, uh, I've had some ups and downs on this quarantine and, you know, pandemic, illness, people are dying. This ain't, it's not good. Personally, I'm freaking thriving. I, I have been making the most money I've ever made. I have, I've been stealing, like my neighbors keep getting these packages and I just keep taking them. And I got some today. These are Beats by Dre, baby. Beats by Dre. That's you. <laughs> my neighbor, Hugh. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's been going pretty good. I'm a little elated. So I just, I just got off the clock. I am a little uh elated is that i think that's how you say it uh i've got some pretty good news i've got some pretty good news for y'all i don't know you probably might notice something a little bit different with me other than i shaved get out of here <laughs> uh no nah, i'm just kidding this is a bottle opener <laughs> jesus this is tough how do you and my secretary does that. <laughs> All right. All right. Who did this? Who put a bunch of money on my desk? <laughs> I got crazy roommates. I got wild roommates, man. And I don't know. Everything's been pretty lit. <laughs> Good news. That's what I was going to tell you about. Let me do this old rum and coke here. Coca-Cola. I stopped doing cocaine back in back at Harvard uh, University <laughs> in Connecticut. <laughs> y'all might so y'all have noticed a little wardrobe change. Your boy finally got accepted to the Wizards. I'm a sorcerer. I applied. I spent twelve hundred dollars uh, to get into the International Sorcerer. Uh, what it's the International Society of Intermediate Sorcerers, and I had to pay him twelve hundred dollars. It's kind of like SAG. Kind of how like the SAG after stuff works. So I paid them twelve hundred bucks, and I'm in the uh, I'm officially in the International Society of Intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a part of it, baby. <laughs> ISIS. I got the letter from the White House saying that <laughs> signed by sources. And what? So I knew about this. I knew about this for about a week. You know, I got the email. Everything's digital these days. Uh, but today, this is why I'm excited. Today, I got my official. This is a wizard set. A lot of people are probably not familiar with wizards and sorcerers and sor sorceress. Um, so this is basically there's a loop here. You put it on your wizard robe, which is, this is not my wizard robe. This is my smoking jacket. So <laughs> that's just normal. Uh, so basically, it's like a satchel. You can put whatever in here. You put all your scrolls and trinkets, and then you kind of rest it. Kind of try. Um, this is, this ain't gonna be a thirst trap. I'm showing you how to practically use this wizard satchel. Uh, but yeah, those <laughs> are real abs. So you kind of put it here, and then you can store your. I don't know if y'all can see that potion, your your potions and stuff in there. Of course, I just got a bunch of five hour energy in there for now because I'm still waiting on some of the scrolls. Uh, the biggest thing I am most elated about is. They sent me my little homie, my little wizard homie. Uh, you get these in the mail, and it's official. You you cowards go to Harvard University. You go to Brown. You spend hundreds and billions of dollars on tuition, and you get a piece of paper that you put in a frame, and you put it on your wall. Well, how do you think this this little puppy's going to look in a frame on my wall? I'm going to put this in a big-ass frame. I hang that shit on my wall, y'all. I'm going to put that there. Still whittling. I'm still working on my wand. It's got quite a bit of work. Um, 
illegal. It's illegal to have it about 42 inches. This is a 42 inch wand. And um, <laughs> they do, it's not, they don't accept it. So it's a little, I'm kind of the bad, I'm kind of the bad boy in the, in ISIS. I'm kind of the naughty boy, <laughs> but I don't even know. And the biggest, the, basically the biggest thing The biggest thing about this, and I guess we can get a little more serious. The biggest thing about, I hear it all the time and I know what you're thinking. Uh, first of all, with quarantine, uh, with not being able to hang out with anybody and now I'm officially a wizard. People are going, all, all my jock friends, all my no neck muscle dummy, noodle brain, spaghetti head jocks. They're all like, so, you, so basically you're not gonna get laid anymore. <laughs> now that you got a bunch of wizard dolls in your room and buddy first of all i wasn't getting laid prior to this and uh that's mostly by choice it is 100 percent by choice i have been abstaining from sex and self not an issue quarantine hasn't been an issue i think that's why i'm thriving so much we got zahid's over there sucking ice cream out of his mattress and honestly i don't even eat dairy <laughs> And I'm out here, I'm, I'm out here and like, here's the deal. A lot of people, they're, they're a little judgy. It's kind of like when you tell people you don't drink, they're always like, and you know, if we're going to get intimate, take off my little sliders. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people, when, if somebody says I don't drink or I don't drink, they always assume there's like a big reason, like you made a fool out of yourself. You have a problem. Same thing goes with sex, but the reason I'm abstaining <laughs> from sex is it's religious it's for religious reasons it is because of um god <laughs> I, um, <laughs> i'm like i'm abstaining for god essentially and basically i just want god to be i just want to fuck god for the to be my first i want to have sex with god <laughs> and i want it to be pure i mean think about it homeboy is omnipotent Start, start counting the holes on your body right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of mint chocolate. That's a lot of rocky road, depending where you put it. <laughs> rocky road would probably be... What? Probably, I mean, I'd like to say my abs are the rocky road, but these puppies are smooth. Look at that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, I'm not very religious. I just, um, it's mostly my personality that has been why I, I've um, <clears throat> never been laid. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that's my voice. That's it. <laughs> no, sorry. Guys, it's been such a funny show. What a fucking fantastic show. Ted, first of all, from this, the whole, every person on this set, but just to, to re, Teddy is my favorite person. That was amazing. Uh, what Zaya did was incredible. What Ryan did was revolutionary. Pat was so hilarious, but has been on mute this entire time. I imagine both Pat and, and Aaron kept themselves on mute because they're constantly eating in between sets. And so it's, <laughs> it's nicer for the rest of us. Because if you've ever heard it, either Pat or Aaron eat, it's very, it's sexual and it's aggressive and it's racist. Um, <laughs> and I'm just so fucking happy to be here. This is, this is my favorite thing to perform for is people who probably reside in or around Austin. I used to drive, I live in Houston, which is a bad place to live. And I would drive to, to Austin on Sundays to do the open mic at Cap City. I would do four shitty minutes and I'd drive back to Houston. That's how much better the audience is in Austin <laughs> are. And I'm not, I don't want you to take that as a compliment. You're not better people. They're still <laughs> garbage through and through. You know what I mean? I, I, I could never live in Austin because I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a white person who's secretly racist or uh, a minority that owns a three-legged dog. So I, I have to live in a real city, but I love Austin. It's the best. I, this is a terrible way to start, by the way, if you've never seen me before. Now you just hate me. But I kind of like that. It's baked in. I'm sort of unlikable. Like me and Zaid, we're unlikable, but we, we go different ways to get there, you know? Um, he's like Michael Jordan. I'm like, I'm like Zaid. Uh, <laughs> what is that leaving me? Can I just tell you guys? So this is a, a sort of somber, serious note. Uh, my father is stuck in Romania. He was trying to leave in the beginning of March. The city that he's in is a COVID hotspot. And uh, Delta actually canceled his ticket without him even being on a Delta flight. They just knew where he was coming from. <laughs> so he's just stuck in his hometown. It's under a military quarantine. So it's like, uh, it's like reminding him of his childhood in communism where there's just like curfews and people are like, where's your papers? You know, why are you going? Where are you? What are you doing? And he, the whole reason he's even stuck there, he went there to bury his mother. That's right. His mom had just died. <laughs> Thank you for whoever laughed, laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to paint nah. this really sad story, but actually I, it is kind yes. of funny. So thank you. So he's there with his dead mom and <laughs> those stories of communism haunting him. And do you know what he does with all his free time? FaceTimes me in the middle of the, uh, the night and he teaches me life lessons. Um, so he's drunk and he FaceTimes me and he goes, boy, <laughs> do you know how to make a woman come? And I said, oh no, stop. I'm in bed next to my wife. And he goes, first you put two in the mouth part and then two in the bottom and you close the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> He's an electrical engineer, so he wasn't fucking around. That was real advice he wanted to give me. I don't have an ending to that. It's just a sad thing. That happens in my life. My dad is depressed, and he's teaching me how to make women come. And I've tried it on my wife. It doesn't even work at all. So fuck you, dad. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, I, I love Pat, by the way. I hope you guys don't think I, I'm a I'm a mean person. I like to do mean things, but Pat Dean, my favorite. I wrote a, a joke about Pat Dean during the quarantine. Do you guys want to hear it? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so I was I was I was walking around Austin looking for a place to jerk off, and, <laughs> and I found this dumpster behind a Long John Silver's, and I was like, "Oh, that looks good." So I go to lift up the lid to jerk off in the dumpster, but Pat Dean's in there. And he sees me jerking off and he goes, hey, I don't come in your house and come in your house. <laughs> Terrible joke, by the way. Well, now everyone's going to know about the long John Silver. <laughs> I made him come out. Of, I made him come out of isolation. Do you hear that? He was like Edward Snowden peeking his head up when there's a new NSA thing. <laughs> by the way, this. This quarantine comedy thing, people are like, oh, yeah, it's just for people who are stuck inside. It's not just for people stuck inside during Corona. There's all kinds of people that weren't going to comedy but would have loved stand up. There's people who are dis disabled. There's people who are medically ugly. There's, <laughs> um, 
Uh, Osama bin Laden was in a cave for many years and he would have benefited from this form of light entertainment. And so, we, you know, <laughs> light entertainment. <laughs> I learned um, I learned a song. On, I'm I'm actually sitting at a piano because I do a lot of Zoom shows. So if uh, if at any point a joke doesn't land, I'll start uh, playing Randy Newman's Short People. <laughs> the whole song. I play the whole fucking song. If you stop laughing, by the way. So, and I do the voice. I go Short People got no reason. So, okay, listen, I never get to do that bit because there's never pianos in comedy clubs. <laughs> and I was doing that bit at some point a couple weeks back before stand-up was illegal or some, <laughs> some version of some Randy Newman bit. And I'm doing the voice and a drunk lady gets up and she stands up and she goes, hey, you shouldn't impersonate mentally disabled people. And I was like, no, 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 oh, that's Randy Newman. He, a bug's life, like Toy Story. He, Randy, he's just got a specific voice. And then she goes first. She goes, that's why we don't say the word retard. It's like the N word. And I was like, I don't even know what you mean, but what, what are you? No, I shouldn't say either words, but America has a very different relationship with those two groups of people, okay? <laughs> those plantations would have been worthless. What are you talking about? Very inefficient. <laughs> No work would have gotten done. <laughs> a mentally this plantation and the spirituals would have been terrible. <laughs> you got a friend in the water. It would just. Ugh. <laughs> That's not retard voice. That's a Randy Newman impression, please. <laughs> I just don't care. I want to get canceled. That's what I'm going for now. What? So what? You gonna take this away from me? Good. I don't need. I don't want this. <laughs> First part of my day. No, I'm kidding. I love this. Please don't hurt me. Hey, this is a fun one. This is not to get wash the taste out of that last one. Hey, <laughs> Joe Biden. We got to vote for him, and he might be a sex offender. Isn't that fun? What a fun twist <laughs> for your vote. Here's the thing. If we have to compromise everything we've worked for and essentially just turn back the Me Too clock to rationalize voting for Joe Biden. Shouldn't we let Kevin Spacey come back and film that last season of House of Cards? <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna compromise on these more, shouldn't we bargain for, some, let's get Kevin in there. We'll get Woody Allen to do two more movies and we'll get one more remix to Ignition. That seems fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something? Uh -huh. If you don't like me, you're correct. You're right in your assumption. <laughs> I was, I've, I've always been this way. I was a bad kid growing up, by the way. I was a terrible piece of shit. My mom would have to smell my breath every time I came home just to see if I've, if I've been out. <laughs> Fun time for the trombone, yes. <laughs> but my mom, did, she would have to smell my breath all the time when I came home just to see if I've been out all night eating ass. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know how she, I would smoke cigarettes and weed and all kinds of shit to cover up, but she knew it was ass underneath there every time. And I, I don't know. I'm 25. So I have to, I'm going to talk about eating ass, you know, because it's everyone in my generation does it. But we do. We eat the ass. And they call us soft. They call us <laughs> soft. They, we took prison sex and we made that shit casual. That's the, what are you talking about? We all eat ass and we have no health insurance. Do you know how dangerous that is? <laughs> There's some 40 year old and up people who are like, I don't even eat pussy if it's not Christmas. And we're like, pussy? <laughs> what are you saying? That's an appetizer. Give me the asshole. I need something beer battered. <laughs> I hit my laptop on that one. Look, I have to go, but I don't want you guys to think I'm a bad person just because I say, horrible shit to make a few comedians laugh <laughs> i think i'm a nice decent human being i i'll do anything for my friends even if it hurts me like the other a few weeks ago i had to ejaculate on my buddy <laughs> i know it no it sounds it sounds like a whole thing but he got stung by a jellyfish and i couldn't pee so we had to use something and it was yeah it was awkward he got stung on the face 
<laughs> oh. I don't know how that jellyfish got into his room when he was sleeping, and I didn't ask. <laughs> I was just there because I'm a great friend. And that joke doesn't make everyone laugh. <laughs> but it's not meant to. Do you understand? What that joke is meant to do is confuse some of you who are weaker and stupider. So the next time someone in your life gets stung by a jellyfish, you're like, wait, is it piss or cum? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn, we're going to have to do both just to be safe. <laughs> Fuck, dad, bad news. We got to give you the world's worst Arnold Palmer. I'm so sorry. Get away. <laughs> All right, that's my time. <laughs> Try to remember that joke. <laughs> Radu Bondar. Oh man, Radu coming on faces and uh... <laughs> <laughs> I remember specifically going to hair school, a young 21 year old me and thinking this isn't gay. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 uh, Houston sounds fun. <laughs> I want to go to there. That's all I'm saying. Uh, that's the show. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, the comedians. Um, if you like them, Venmo them a private message. Don't be an uh, don't be an at. Well, do whatever you want. If you're gonna send the money, send the money. But also, you can send the money with a little note on it, right? You can send them something that they'll actually read. If you slide in my DMs, I may or may not read it. But if you send me money, I'm reading that, all right? <laughs> you can send any of these comedians a very specialized message that says, eat my ass and come on my face. There's a jellyfish in here. <laughs> Thank you all for the performance again. Thank you, Derek Kostwa, for the music. Thank you, Good uh, Richard Goodwin, for being a tech guru. This is all so smooth compared to other uh, to shows, I promise you. <laughs> I have done them. Thank you, uh, Laura That's Smith. Fired. And thank you, uh, Valerie Lopez, for being the uh, production wizards. Thank you, Awesome Chronicle, for giving us a little shout out. Thank you for writing me that personalized jellyfish message. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy us. Let us know. Follow us on Facebook or whatever. I post my ass pictures on Instagram, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next week. See you next week.